Bienvenue slash welcome to another Café Rollist, a little bit of informal chat with a hot beverage, uh, taking advantage of people being unemployed and social distancing, trying to make the best of the situation. And I've got here two people with pitch perfect English to tell us about <laughs> something which happened this weekend. Could each of you introduce uh, yourselves, please? Go ahead, Tali. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to start? Yeah, okay, I'll start. Uh, so I'm I'm Tali. Um, so this week I was the mama bear for the CyberConf. Um, and normally I'm also uh, in, cha uh, in charge of uh, the programmation for the Swiss convention Orchidée. So, yeah. Okay, and I was Alec O'Kane. Uh, I was in charge of visual uh, for the CyberConf and diffusion, so like streaming and just hosting stuff. And I don't have anything to plug except like if you can find me online. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, uh, I mean, we already. I, I guess I'm going to start. I keep forgetting. I have a couple of ice-breaking questions and I keep forgetting to ask them to to my guests so l let's go there so the, my first would be uh, if you are comfortable discussing that do you have a what's your routine like at the moment with uh, social distancing and staying at home uh, uh, being enforced in, at different levels in your in all countries uh, Tali um, yes uh, for me um, so I have to so I'm unemployed for the moment, but uh, I'm I have to 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 go uh, to um, to wake up because my husband is uh, is working, so <laughs> I have no choice. Um, so I am, the first thing I think I'm I write uh, because I'm better for that uh, in the morning, and so I'm starting my um, my day with a couple of hour writing and then maybe reading uh, the next, the last week I was bu busy with the, the convention. So uh, then I was dealing with uh, the moderation and all the problems <laughs> that, uh, that were always showing up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but this week it, it's very quiet here. I'm mostly I'm, I'm playing big video games. <laughs> I'm trying to, to play all the games that uh, that I had left uh, because I had no time before. I'm so jealous of you. Uh, with a two, <laughs> a two years old, that's not the sort of uh, activity I can engage into uh, at the moment. You are in Switzerland, right? Yes, in Lausanne. So it's uh, uh, it's next to the Geneva Lake, uh, Lake Geneva in English, Lake Léman in French. <laughs> Just across the but French here, border, right? It's some um, no, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's oh, so Lac Léman and La Lake Geneva are the same lake. Yes. Oh, okay. In Switzerland, we call it Lac Léman because it's um, it the historical name, uh, and Lac de uh, Lake Geneva. It's uh, in English, German, but I'm not sure in Italian. It's yeah, it depends. <laughs> For the uh, people from the US who might and fans of Dungeons and Dragons who might be confused, Geneva Lake is the one, <laughs> the original <laughs> one in Switzerland. It's not the one <laughs> yeah. where they have a D and D convention uh, with, in back in the day, oh, yeah. Gary Gygax and so on. Yeah. Which I I thought at some point that uh, being confused, I thought that Gygax like I don't know Charlie Chaplin would have retired in Switzerland to enjoy his fortune, um, but apparently it's not the case. There's another Geneva Lake in the US. Yeah, and Gygax, Gygax uh, it's a Swiss name. So oh, we have really? a lot of Gygax here, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I like cocaine, which uh, it's funny, you're the second person I'm in touch who, who's got a, a handle, I'm not sure it would be appropriate in English speaking. <laughs> World. <laughs> yeah, but because it's from a song that was not appropriate to begin with. <laughs> but uh, for me, so I'm not far from Switzerland because I'm in France, across the Alps in Lyon. 
which is like right next to it. If you cross the Alps, you're in Switzerland. Oh, with our friends uh, at Trollun, we, we recorded an episode there. It's not released yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm there. So my morning routine is uh, basically I just like wake up, try to grab some coffee uh, really early because uh, since I'm working from home and I have trouble concentrating on what I work in, <laughs> I'm doing longer days, but with multiple pose everywhere because I I can't focus, really. Uh, so your productivity is, well, you you kept the yeah, level. Yeah, productivity is really really bad right now. <laughs> uh, except at night when uh, we go, we we did something for the cyberconf, and I was like, okay, finished my first day, time to to start the second, <laughs> and I did uh, quite a bit of stuff. Uh, basically, I'm working in programming right now. Uh, so day was programming, night was like uh, handling visual elements. Cool. And now it's weird because there's a vacuum, but I'm still really motivated to do stuff. So I'm trying to write an RPG, do everything on the side, and my pro TV is, is still pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, my, my so I don't know. My own routine is, uh, yeah, wake up, breakfast with my wife uh, before she starts working from home. Uh, I got a workout app I'm using now, so I'm trying to <laughs> to do sport at home, and then uh, then taking my son to the park. Usually coming back lunch, uh, trying to have my son take a nap, and if he takes a nap and it's Monday, Wednesday or Friday, here I am on Twitch <laughs> with you. Uh, Another ice-breaking question I had was, is there anything, uh, a new skill or a new hobby you started because of uh, what's happening? Like, for instance, I started doing preserve of carrots, you know, like the uh, Asian way, like Vietnamese way. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, no, because uh, I was already doing too many stuff before the the confinement so i'm just trying to do to 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 do the old <laughs> trying to i'm knitting uh crotch crocheting in, in english um a cross stitching yeah, um, i think cross stitch no with a, a, cro a crochet with the uh oh, okay you you some kind of knitting mm -hmm. yeah you i think it's crochet uh, you're doing like little cthulhu yeah, it's crochet, dice bags yes. and stuff yeah, and uh, I'm trying yeah, to to write a lot, and no, I think I, I still not, but maybe uh, I will try some new thing when I have more time because uh, until now uh, I was very busy with the convention. So, so same for you, like okay, uh, you too busy um, with the convention? Yeah, busy, but uh, like I said, I started writing an RPG and I never really wrote anything before. Uh, so writing and we're starting to uh, gather with people from the convention uh, to do more. Like uh, we got the Radio Lib, which was some kind of open mic and trying to do like a regular thing um, and doing some run, run table and other things on the side. Uh, we're still trying to do it, and we want to just practice to get better because first time was good, but we felt like we need to improve a lot to the standards uh, out there, and we need to practice, and we just want to work with each other again because uh, the vacuum that left after the convention was, I miss you guys. I, I want to work <laughs> with you. Uh, it, it is fun. It, it is cool, and I want to continue it. So we're trying to do like a continuation of that, like playing with people and doing projects. So yeah, that, that's what happened after that. <laughs> and I got, and I didn't have before. So uh, so yeah, the convention we already had Axel and Solipsis who told us about the how it, it all started. Uh, well, can you tell us how it went this weekend a bit? What were your role and maybe how yourself joined the uh, the team? How soon you did so and, and why and how? Uh, starting with Tally. Okay, um, so I joined the convention because um, someone of the of the committee, uh, Macalis, uh, come to 
to ask uh, to ask us so from us uh, the from Orchidee so the convention Orchidee uh, if they can take uh, use uh, our um, oh I don't know how we would say that in English our um, in sh uh, our um, behavior I don't know code of conduct uh, uh, yeah code manifesto. of conduct yeah yeah um, and um, so uh, I I asked, oh, can I can I join in? Can I come? Uh, and she said, yes, no problem. And then when the 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 the, the manifesto was uh, ready, I said, oh, um, but uh, it's very fine to have one. But now we need maybe some people to to make sure that uh, everyone uh, respects it. And then they said, sure, come. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so it was me, and I they they asked me to yeah to 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 lead the the moderation team. So <laughs> it feels a bit like part of the the reason why the cyberconf team felt so professional uh, might have been because several uh, quotation mark actual conventions got cancelled, and then these people who do something in Switzerland, Belgium, France, uh, not or wherever, they ended up collating, you know, merging into CyberConf. Is that the case? I think, but I'm not sure we are so many from other convention. Uh, I know there is someone from Nantes. Um, That's uh, Utopia, so right? No, Nantes. Uh, yes, from the, yeah, for the, the, the RPG uh, section. Um, I'm not sure. I like okay. Do you know uh, where not come from? Not really, uh, because I never like actually did some uh, preparation for convention. I've been to some, not that many, and but from the staff, actually, I knew from like you are from the staff of OKD, but uh, and we got people that worked in other convention, like um, moderation, Yukiko that worked, uh, that did some. Uh, stuff angle that was working on another convention that has nothing to do with the RPG. We got people all over from the staff, and but from the actual core staff, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't yeah. know really. I'm not sure either. But there, I think maybe um, other people uh, were doing were uh, uh, organizing a convention, but uh, not now. But um... In the past years, I'm. People, I who, think, uh, who, yeah, we might not have their event con cancelled, uh, hopefully, but we still had the skills and uh, the, yeah. the experience to to do so. So, I like okay. Oh, did you join the CyberConf? How did that happen? So, uh, I was on another Discord uh, that do some actual plays, uh, just a place with few people, but there's uh, Samuel Zitterman that goes there sometimes and he just said like, yeah, we're trying to do something like, I don't know, fun. Uh, he said that on the, the 30th uh, of March um, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'm going to just check it out. And they were like, we need some visual. Uh, Willox, the one in charge of communication made a small logo and I was like, oh, that's cool. Uh, maybe you could change that and that and that. And then uh, I just like offer some advice and he said, yeah, you know your stuff. Do you want to be on board? <laughs> 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 and so I was there, yeah, sure, let's go. And then the thing got hectic, really, really hectic. Well, hectic, <laughs> but uh, very successful. I, uh, I think the, the feedback, uh, I don't have access to the survey you are performing, but the the findings are, I've seen so far was that something like 80% of people were very happy with how the, the convention went. And I, I'm, I'm, yeah, we... as I'm as I'm seeing that, I'm browsing the or Discord, which is uh, to try to find the. There, there were some statistics which were quite uh, quite oh, interesting. Uh, I can I have the numbers on the side, but we didn't uh, um, look at the survey yet. We're waiting for people to answer it. We got like 150 people so far that answered it. And we're probably going to do that next week, uh, like trying to to, got, to get the stats and the feedback from actual people because we got like 
uh, feedback like thank yous, but we, we, we need more something more concrete than that. But basically, yeah, it was like, uh, I can give you the numbers, but not the satisfaction numbers. We got like 1,700 people that were on the Discord. Uh, we got like... Uh, 140 game tables, is that right? Yeah, 140. Uh, we're still uh, trying to uh, confirm that number. Roughly, yeah, because there were some table yeah, go ahead Ali. like oh yeah, yeah there were some uh i don't know how to say it savage table so, <laughs> so... <laughs> Improv that. Improv so it, could table. Be, it could be actually yeah. even more tables you mean uh, you mean spontaneous tables which were not accounted for yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah like the number is pretty good we got the, the table that were planned before the comp but the numbers of table that happened we got that number too but not exactly the number of table that got added on as the, the convention went on. Yeah. We we knew roughly we we know roughly how many, but it's not an exact number. I mean, it's it's already an extensive number, one hundred and thirty. That's that's really really impressive. Um, Teddy, uh, I thought it was interesting. I heard you mention. Uh, I think it was a closing at the closing ceremony on Twitch. A bit uh, about your your work moderating uh, the event and the the different teams you put in place. Can you tell us a bit about that? Because I thought it was quite fascinating that you didn't go with one team; you went with several, and you you could name them in a rather cool manner. <laughs> yeah. So I I've decided that I uh, I wanted two teams because um, moderation is not only uh, the 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 cup job is also it's the also the a bit more um, something like an oh, uh, an emotional support too because you you can punish people but you can also help them if they are in trouble they didn't want to only have cops so I have I had two team I had a bear, bear team so they were the the actual moderators moderators and I have um, a unicorn team who were the, uh, who was here to perform some emotional support to give advices on uh, the um, emotional security tools like the X cards or um, other techniques they were also there if someone someone uh, was not feeling well uh, needed a uh, needed a hug or <laughs> something like that um, and yeah, it well, it went very, very, very well. Um, we we weren't busy at all. I was very, very afraid because uh, you know, on internet, on internet um, problem. So there are many problems because people speak uh, speak without uh, thinking, and uh, and yeah, and the conflicts can escalate uh, very, very quickly. But uh, in the end. Uh, uh, there was always two, three moderator in the same time, and most of the time they were just taking, chatting, to get, uh, chatting together because there, there wasn't much to do. <laughs> so for the people who were not there, uh, so you, most of that was happening on a Discord channel with multiple Discord sub channels also for on Twitch. different games. And uh, yeah, what, what I did not really realize because I'm, I'm clueless is that your moderators had a, a specific role, I mean, role as a sort of title on Discord, and that included yeah. having a little symbol with a, the head yeah, a little of bear, a bear yeah. or a little unicorn. So yeah. what you were explaining also the other time was how uh, probably the fact that they would go around and move between chat rooms with their little logo would sort of be like, um, what's the word? Uh, discouraging uh, uh, misbehaviors yeah. in a way, you know, in a positive way, without having to intervene, but just uh, patrolling. Mm -hmm. And I guess people just felt yeah. threatened, which is a good thing. Yeah, and we were very, 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 um, uh, very strict at the beginning. So before the convention, uh, we had a lot of a lot of troubles with a few people. So the moderators were very, very, very. Um, yeah, very severe, uh, and then it was, it wasn't necessary. So, uh, that was 
for me the perfect situation. You also you almost had some preemptive work, prep work with that, but then yeah. it paid off uh, when the, the actual event started. Yeah, and I was, uh, and um, we didn't have uh, a lot of uh, general channel channels uh, to just chat because I uh, I knew that it was very risky to do that. Uh, a channel where everyone can speak, uh, it's very, very difficult to, to moderate. And um, and yeah, the, the, the bad behaviors there can be very, yeah, they can be, a, they, they can, you can have a lot of bad behaviors, um, insulting, insults, um, just yeah um also flu uh, i don't is it an english term to flood <laughs> flood the, yeah uh, yeah but... a lot of uh, of unwanting uh, uh, diff and uh, and yeah and pictures and so on so yeah mm -hmm. so i like okay most of your experience was on the twitch channel right well, tell yeah, us uh, how channel. it went for you the the supercom for what was your experience there um it was pretty amazing uh like the thing is since on the discord there was no channel to actually spam people could like spam the love in twitch and just like talk in this channel really a lot so it was um roughly like in uh roughly like 80 people at all time on on the stream uh there was a dip like in at 5 a.m where there were like 15 to 30 people but that's actually still a great number for a channel that just opened two weeks before the convention and we got like 200 people uh, at some round table talking and being civilized and courteous to each other so pretty pretty nice uh also on this twitch channel we got uh, a team from quebec that was working with us and it was absolutely amazing to just like pass the torch to the other team and go do your thing i want to see your thing and even like the best part of the convention for me uh at first was something else and now i saw the uh credits from the for the quebec team because uh, i did uh, um, a credit on the sunday like at 5 5 p.m i was uh, really motivated like let's do some credit like let's thank everyone that was on the staff and just go and the quebec team was like we don't have the mean let's do it on paper and they just went like with papers in front of the camera like going like let's do it live and it's gonna be fun it, it was really really like uh genuine and so so fun to work with them also the round table were amazing uh, i don't know how many hours of sleep i lost just like uh, just one more J just let's just watch one more and see how it goes and just getting hooked yeah it was, it was i really enjoy uh my my own uh run run table i'm confused with words in english we say seminars or panels uh it was oh, funny yeah. when, when i when <laughs> there was a vocabulary issue for me in french when I got in touch with the table ronde team because they, 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 yeah, I told them, well, I want to do a, a, a panel. And I think I told uh, Macalis, I don't know, uh, I'm not sure what's the right term in French. And say, okay, but so what, uh, so, so what is it going to be? Oh, it's going to be this. And I said, I think it's, it's a debate. And th th there was this back and forth of, oh no, actually that's a table ronde because a debate is one person versus another. You got two conflicting uh, ideas. I was like, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's people with a microphone and we, we try to, to make sense uh, uh, of things. But uh, what I enjoyed even more was the Radio Libre, the, the free radio in between uh, the round tables, uh, a couple of which I, I joined like a big barbarian pushing the door but th that was that was awesome and it was funny uh, to have uh, I had Willem from Voix d'Altaride and uh, Ice Cream for Everyone tell me he enjoyed me more when I was on the Radio Libre because I felt much more laid back and relaxed uh, than than for the round table itself and uh, yeah I think he, he was entirely right of that and uh, I think it was the case not only for for me but for a lot of people uh, you 
you had a lot of guests. I mean, did you have maybe not your favorite guest, but your favorite moments uh, when you were running that uh, at Akokin? Um, I think that was uh, all uh, like Radio Libre. I don't know. Both were really good. Because uh, at noon, I was with Tali, uh, Olshad, and uh, Axel. And we were discussing a lot of RPG stuff and like technique to just like improve. And at night, we were with Axel. Uh, I did an interview for the first time in my life. So I don't know, actually, like people, uh, both were really good and both were different. Did you have a uh, favorite yeah. moment on Twitch, uh, Tali, as well? Um, you took part to, be on, to be honest, it was uh, not when I was on Twitch, but I on the Saturday morning I come, I, I wake up very early, early and uh, I was maybe at at six thirty on Twitch, and there was the Canadians who were playing. Um, uh, it was for the. Uh, um, a hack from for the drama uh, it was for more good points. I think it's a Hogwarts uh, hack, and uh, it was very funny. And then they start playing uh, for the for a Athena. It's a, a French hack to play. Uh, I don't know, yeah, Knights uh, yeah, uh, of the Zodiac. Zodiac yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah, and that was yes, and um, I started uh, in the chat to to give them some uh, incredible and and not and very funny name of uh, attacks and techniques, so they can scream the, the the name of the techniques on on game. So it was very funny for me because I was like uh, whispering in their ears, yeah, you can say that uh, this kind of uh, yeah. So it was uh, attack de l'aurore celeste, or uh, it was uh, yeah, the attack of the I don't know celestial dome, you know, some sort of thing. I that love, sounds very like the. I the, love Sensei. Uh, the I anime. found the system uh, I enjoyed for for the game. Yeah, I, I need to check. This is available already on the YouTube channel of Cybercomba, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it is on there. We still need to put a link in the description. We got only like description for panels so far. But we need to put links like what game are we playing and timestamps because sometimes I got like interview, then other stuff, and the video is like an hour and 50 minutes uh, for I don't know Radio Libre. And we got really videos, they're not cut yet, or and I don't know if we're planning to cut them, so we'll probably need to do some timestamp. But yeah, this one uh, definitely you, you can check it. Uh, I think it's in the title just for the drama. Or for it in here. Uh, I think I'm going to watch it uh, while cooking tonight. I'm going to put it on my Google Home, which uh, my Google Home, most of the convention was broadcasted in my kitchen, uh, which is also my living room. I got a, a single room, but uh, so my wife could enjoy it uh, as well during the day. That was that was funny to have the radio on, uh, a bit like when I go on holiday with my step parents and they put on Julien Courbet, but much better than Julien Courbet. <laughs> uh, so yeah I'm dabbling with Twitch at the moment if I, I was uh, one of the skills I'm developing here is yeah trying to understand a bit better how things are, are working or to stream on YouTube and Twitch tried that today apparently it didn't work but uh, I was wondering you, you mentioned uh, doing uh, more stuff for Cybercom have something ongoing maybe do more free radio uh, as I dabble with Twitch, I was wondering, are you going to try to, I don't know, have the CyberConf account turn partner or affiliate by having ongoing works and events so that when you have the the convention coming back, uh, it would mean that you maybe have more tools to, to do some fundraising or uh, reach people through Twitch? Because again, I'm learning about this stuff, so I have no clue what's going on. So the other day, someone gave me a subscription to a channel and I was like, did I click something? What happened? Did I pay for something? Uh, apparently not. Uh, <laughs> hello to the Twitch stream of Tabletop Horde Virginia from Modifius. Uh, if people want to check a cool account. Um, we're definitely planning to expand because like so far we, we had like few channels working around with, uh, with us, but no real good way to advertise them. Uh, so we're trying to to plan stuff to 
have like a, a Twitch group or stuff you can just click on and see who is playing actual plays and other content. Uh, well, if you do this thing again, I think we're going to do it because, I mean, everyone is so, so pumped to do it. Uh, for like the, the free radio, uh, we are not doing it uh, on the channel of the CyberConf. Uh, we're doing on alternate channels, uh, basically because uh, we don't want to take the, um, uh, the lead on, okay, uh, everyone left to do something else, and we got like five people going, yeah, well, we're still the CyberConf. Not really. It's like the Utopials and Overcomp. You do stuff on the side, but you don't really just uh, take the, um, the thing all year long and do something with it. I, feel, I think that's why I'm thinking so far. We don't know if it's gonna evolve. It's still still pretty new. Uh, and that's pretty much it, I think. Uh, I don't know if you have other questions or if I answered well. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Uh, uh, Tally, uh, sort of riffing on the, the theme of the, the future and moving forward. Uh, I mean, it's still fresh. It was less than a week ago. It was last weekend, but do you know do you have a among the organizers a planned catch up to discuss the future and make a decision whether it's happening in may yeah. in six months in one year um so uh we didn't uh, we don't have the, the we didn't have the time to make the the debriefing so but uh, yeah i think most Every one of uh, every um, organizer is very motivated, uh, very uh, yeah, motivated to to come back. So, and probably it will be in six months, but we're not so sure. Uh, we're still discussing between us, because um, in the problem is that in so in spring there is many convention. Uh, 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 and it will not be easy to find a date for uh, um, uh, to for the convention that is not uh, on a major uh, convention in Switzerland, in in France, uh, in Belgium. Uh, I don't know the convention in in Quebec, but maybe also. So um, we, we I looked uh, yeah a, a bit and. Um, there is two possibilities, maybe in autumn, uh, but we still have to to speak, <laughs> to discuss between us. So. Can only and we can only hope that by then we we will be out, <laughs> not stuck at home. Yeah, we hope so. But yeah. people were were very um, very happy with this cybercon, and uh, they are they want to to play more and to play with people they they don't know. Uh, that, uh, because uh, when you play online, usually you play with with your friend, with your online friend, yes, but friends, people you already know, and and here from the cybercom was people from all over the the French speaking part of Europe and also uh, Quebec, and uh, so you you never know, uh, you never knew when you speak with someone from from Switzerland, from Quebec, and it was very interesting to 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 meet new people and to discover other ways of of um, playing so i think it was yeah um most of the player were very um oh, uh, hyped maybe <laughs> the, this for for them it was very interesting to 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 discover the this new way of playing yeah and playing and interacting and i think there was kind of a an epiphany for a lot of people regarding the fact that they could play online and it was fun uh, but yeah. but also that a, a convention but again cyberconf compared to what i've seen with academic online and other conventions uh, is pushing the brief quite far with with stands for for game designers publishers uh, bloggers and so on, which you can visit with the different people, with the free radio. Uh, it it really felt like a online convention more than a a ev online event to to give it another name, which would be binded by a hashtag and maybe a, a program of things you can catch. It, it really it felt very 
very concrete so yeah i think a lot of whatever happened next hopefully this sort of things could become a one of the format you you can find for the community to to engage with one uh, another any comment on that uh, la cocaine uh yeah and that's one of the, the thing we put in the uh, uh not the poll, but the thing you answer at the end of the convention is, did you discover like virtual, like online playing? Uh, did you enjoy it? Do you want to try it again? Uh, because uh, we did that with tons of people and we don't know if they're like veteran, they're playing for years and years and years, or if they're like really new and they're going like, yeah, nah, this is not for me or yeah, sure. And that's why we're trying, we, we tried at the end of the convention to offer links to communities to go like, okay, now that you know how it works, go out there, find people, go play. Uh, because we can't maintain this massive thing for long. So find place you enjoy, people you enjoy, discuss with them like you did in there and find games. And it also a thing like, since you go to smaller communities, it is easier to talk than something with 1,700 people. Yeah. I guess moving forward, the, the scale of things could become a, a challenge if, because what happened was already impressive in, when you look at the numbers, but it was organized very well again, but within a couple of weeks, three, maybe four, uh three. the next one what if there's twice as many three times as fa many people joining the the table the the streams and so on that that would be a challenge for you i assume uh Tally. yeah but um i i hope that uh if we we do another another cyber cyber convention it will go as easy as the this time so uh because um yeah, uh, I have too. I had too many moderators. So, if I if I keep the same team, um, if we are more the next time, it will be just perfect. <laughs> are there? Also, for... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, uh, and also the tool will change a little bit because this time we got like a small website with like the yeah. planning, like what's what's going on this weekend, and it was really small because we had really really little time to to do it. So we're trying because this time there were lots and lots of channels and people were pretty lost, which is normal. So we're thinking long term, like, can we get better at this? Like, just inform people and not throw them in there and just like, good luck. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to create um, on the... It was Friday evening, a special channel, a vocal channel uh, named uh, I Am Lost. Uh, for, and then the people who were really lost, they can just click it and connect uh, within vocal. So my moderator can came and explain all the Discord thing. Because for, for some people, just to click on every channel to, to get the info were too complicated. They never were on Discord. So we, <laughs> we end up with this solution. It was maybe, I think, the easiest way for everyone because uh, that keeps my, my moderator busy. And uh, for the people who were lost, um, to, 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 to have something written uh, here, you are lost, come here. Uh, it was, I think, yeah, uh, it was the very reassuring. Um, so so this, I think each, each uh, 15, minute, uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, we, we had someone in this channel. So <laughs> a lot of people were lost. To, to be honest, it's because I didn't have the, the time to invest myself. So I did not even properly try to find my way through the Discord, but it was, yeah, it was kind of, a, a, what's the word? Uh, frightening <laughs> to arrive in the thing, to have, <laughs> to have this list of things and be like, yeah, I mean, at some point, uh, and uh, I was maybe thinking of, uh, I would have a stand, uh, I discussed it and, in the end, it, it didn't happen, but just browsing through to find out whether or not I had one, uh, I, wa <laughs> I was a bit confused. And I think it goes quite well with when you were saying to limit the number of rooms where everyone can talk. Having this one where everyone can talk, but with a specific purpose, which is to yes. help people find their way, it's a very good idea. 
Yeah, and for and, and if people wanted to chat, then can, they they could go to the uh, creator hall or to the uh, booth hall. So th there were some specific channels where people can can just freely talk. But with uh, yeah, they can talk about the the booth or uh, they can talk about the the creator or the media. But um, they can freely talk. But uh, most of the time, they 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 were speaking with the with the the creator, with the uh, the uh, the editors, with yeah um, the draw. There was uh, some uh, artists too, some illustrators. So uh, someone made an online. Uh, um, uh, um, ah, I don't know uh, the term. Uh, you, they uh, you had a coloring contest. Is that yeah, coloring you, contest? Yeah, yeah and uh, it, yeah, it was. There, there were um, there were a lot of of uh, of stuff that that weren't uh, um, uh, <coughs> sorry um, th that were not on the on the on, on the program. So uh, this one, there was someone who make a drawing uh, on um, in, in live. Uh, an illustrator who drew who was making uh, yeah drawing on uh, on live um, the um, the musician I think they he he composed uh, he, he created a, a music during the convention. Wow, that's super <laughs> cool. The I mean uh, uh, to segue into uh, from that a bit, what would be your maybe your what the good idea and maybe the thing you would change moving forward on, on the next edition uh, a la cocaine and then tally can you hear me to, a la cocaine he's starting playing a game on the side oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> I, I muted myself uh i was thinking i don't really know uh for things differently because uh with a time frame we couldn't really do much more than we already did. Uh, I think like it physically, it was impossible with a crew we had to do more. Uh, and that's why yeah, I think it is also a smash success because we did what we could in those time frames, and it was pretty amazing for the time we had. Um, and like I said, going forward, uh, one other thing we could uh, get better on was communication, like actually getting on Twitter, Facebook, and having those posts because uh, it wasn't really automated and there was only one person on it, which was Willox that did all the stuff before that. So he was pretty burned out by the time it was done. That's because the moderation uh, team took all the volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this thing could have been a lot better. And uh, but because we are pretty new still to this, uh, we don't. We didn't have like a, a way to do it, the tools. But we're trying to. Um, we try to to have a thing really well made, like in Google Doc, and like have a tr trace of all we, that we did, uh, so that if everyone leaves, uh, there's a trace of okay, you can do that, 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 that works, that didn't work. Um, so we're trying to to get all of this, and it's going to continue if we do like some uh, post-convention um, chats of what went wrong, what went right, what can we improve? And we didn't do those yet. So that's why my answer is going all everywhere. <laughs> what about you, Tali? Um, what can we improve? Uh, I th <laughs> um, I'm thinking maybe um... Yeah, the website need to be improved because yeah, th there was too too much stuff on Discord and too few on the website. Uh, because um, I think maybe it would be easier to have um, uh, a, a, a map on the Discord or on the website of the, a map of the Discord on the website because um, the problem on Discord and is it's very easy to misclick. Uh, all my moderator were always uh, making fun of me because I was always misclicking. I, I end up in in so many vocal channels that I didn't want to where I didn't want uh, wanted to go. It was just. Uh, you you are searching a specific channel and and you are trying to go down down and down down and you click a little bit too on the, too much on the left and hop 
you connect uh, yourself in in a vocal channel. So when you you are searching for some uh, for uh, something. Uh, I think maybe a, a map on, on the website will be <laughs> easier <laughs> for everyone. Um, I guess the and, question uh, is the the question of interface, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm 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 not coding or uh, website developer, but I assume there might be ways to have the Discord and the website speak to one another, and you could have a, I don't know something like a a isometric view of a convention and when you click on the stands there you actually hear what's going on in the discord which is linked to to that booth and you have a, maybe a little stage for, with the stream or i don't know <laughs> cool. yeah i what, don't what know I was, either but it's an idea I, <laughs> yeah yeah what i was thinking is uh you get uh things like stands or and the like and you click on them uh in the website and you get infos on who they are where they are on the Discord, like just an image of go there. That's where they are. <laughs> okay. uh, what's planning do they do? Like, are they in? Are they out? What are they doing? Like in four hours, and by time zones, because we did that from for the image. But if we got people from Quebec, from London, from everywhere, time zone is a big problem. It yeah. is, yeah. Because every time it's going like, yeah, I'm going at three p.m. Which time? Yeah. Yeah, I have three different uh, time zones in my moderation team. So <laughs> I only ha had to say it's Paris, it's uh, Geneva time. Uh, for you in La Réunion, it's this time. And for you in Quebec, uh, sorry, it's too early for you. <laughs> but uh, Or too late. Or, uh, because, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was very fun to have people from all over the world. But yeah, it's yeah. complicated to organize. We realized that when we, we said, yeah, France time. And everyone went, what? <laughs> Which time? <laughs> because France time doesn't mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, it's a plus one uh, UTC or plus two, plus two. No, I don't, it was plus two. Yeah, the, I don't know if convention. it's the week before, but we just changed time also from British. Yeah, and, and, yeah that was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, people ask us, yes, but was it winter time or summer time? No, it's the time of during the convention. So if you said 3 p.m., it would be 3 p.m during the convention it was, I remember we it have did, a lot of questions about that and it never caught on but uh, in the early 2000s they tried to encourage a internet time which would not be greenwich uh, time it would be something but even a different format with bits or <laughs> whatever um, in hindsight I, I think it was a good idea but I don't I don't see people adopting that. I don't know. It would be, I guess it would be convenient to, to have just one time. But, you know, in your habits, you know that, I don't know, 120 clicks is the middle of your afternoon and you don't have to translate it. Yeah. If you say 120 clicks to uh, my friends in Ohio, they know that it's uh, in the middle, the middle of the night for them. Maybe it... You, you might have... I think people... CyberConf yeah. time. You need to, to make up a, <laughs> a time measuring system of your own to yeah. have people around the table. But we have a problem. Which time is zero? Because uh, if you go the zero, it it, convention. It, yeah, but you can it, count all the hours. <laughs> uh, because if you go with a time frame like beginning of a convention is time zero, okay, no problem. So everyone needs to translate that now. Yeah. Or like but then Already the they were no... translating into their time and That's... then you, you bring something else to translate in. <laughs> That's the benefit of changing the scale. You stop, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I, I should Google what what was the original idea because I, I think they, they had a Esperanto yeah. but... approach, to, approach to things which made it that it was not uh, uh, Great Britain-centric like the, the colonialist uh, time measuring mm -hmm. system where so they, they had found a way to to have a central time which was not central to a to a country it's just you had a different frame of mm -hmm. reference for each of the um, the people um uh, by the way uh, speaking of um, way forward and so on uh, it's not organized yet and I'm, I'm not sure when it will take place because i've got a or busy schedule already as it is but it, it is among my own projects to uh, have a the role is present panel round table uh with someone from cyberconv and someone from different online conventions I interviewed because I think it would be could be interesting to have uh, you folks around the table and see 
how differently uh, each did things because uh, crowd control in Ohio I believe they started with the website and they started with the stands so it might they might have yeah I don't know they might have, have acquired some experience which would be useful for you and uh, the other way around or not but uh, it's interesting to see uh, it's it's exciting think people are developing different things at the moment and because it's all fresh nobody knows a website developer might show up and make a weird interface based on a sphere uh, where you can find everything in CyberConf. You everything is new. The even it's interesting. You you made up new moderation techniques uh, for for the event. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anything else to add? No. <laughs> oh no, I'm no no no. It was just as yeah. In, yeah, in but... really in uh, in in real life convention, you don't have you don't you don't need moderation because. Normally, people self-behave, uh, self but uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I've got people working at UK Games Expo who, <laughs> who might disagree. I well, say normally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you have yeah. one or two problematic people. In Orchidee, we have maybe yeah one or two. But, but... May maybe it would work better in physical convention if we had two teams and one of them is with bear masks and the other is with <laughs> masks. Yeah. Yeah, we're thinking of like uh, since the the thing is off, we're like we need some goodies. Like I want yeah. to wear a t-shirt of a team, like just like have stuff. Uh, but uh, the thing with like uh, security, like emotional security, that was really cool. It was the brief uh, before the convention. Like uh, there was like uh, teaching of how to talk to someone <laughs> and yeah. not like take them from uh, like be confrontational with them do not do that and like <laughs> advice so the team was briefed before and that yeah. was really good like that's thing you need to learn to have a team that talks to uh, emotions yeah it was very ne necessary because um yeah, on when you speak online t t uh, with uh, we are chatting, um, the problem is you don't have the tone, the the voice. So you can take something that is very uh, cheerful. Uh, you can take it wrong the wrong way and say, "Oh no, he's insulting me." No, he's just kidding. It's just and yeah, we'll have to. I ha um, someone in my team is um, is uh, doing um, non I don't uh, nonviolent. Um, Communication. For she, uh, he's a specialist, so he made a, he made us a, a, a very long uh, uh, document with all the tips and so on. And then I had all the the team to read it, uh, read it because they were so stressed. There was so um, a, a lot of problem happened because um, they didn't they didn't know how to to tell someone to just leave me alone. And they they, they was they were saying it. Rothly, so uh, I'll just please leave. You can you, you can say that to someone you want to uh, uh, to someone you have to to make some adjustment and to so <laughs> sometimes I I had to to write uh, email for the other uh, they, they want I, I want to say that how can I say, how can I put it uh, and then I came and I I went yeah this way okay nice it's very yeah it's happened fine thanks and once again. Because yeah, they, they they were at the end they were afraid of making mistakes. <laughs> it's quite well, it's it's interesting because that means you you know we were talking about promotion and I was thinking about the hair to mouth uh, you know organic communication promotion that's gonna be about the event I believe for the next one, but that's another aspect you're describing because everybody who got involved and read those things and acquire this experience now can go on the internet on their own discord and have an understanding of that and maybe even share it and that means people are not only leaving cyberconf with a, a good memories but some good practice about how to engage online and you know it's that's another thing um, it's, um, uh, I'm sidetracking but with the the pandemic, what I see also is a lot of older people getting on the internet, even more than they used to, especially parents. And while my own generation, I'm going to be 40, 40 this summer, 
uh, I believe the younger ones might have maybe some in intuitive better understanding of the the rules you're you're describing I hope so maybe not maybe you should be taught somewhere uh, older generations got even less than I do so they show up online and they it's funny because they they take very badly a lot of things which are said uh, on their Facebook wall by people they know and at the same time they, they're very harsh in the way they communicate to online and they, they don't really understand the privacy setting and not sharing stuff from sources you you don't uh, first know of and second you you agree with so yeah maybe that's a uh, spreading the good practice that's another thing cyberconf is doing don't be modest yeah, I hope it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but it was more. It was uh, yeah for the staff only. Uh, some people come come and talk to us, uh, but it was yeah not so many uh, because yeah um, I think people enjoy more playing than speaking about serious stuff like emotional security or. But uh, for next week, I, I'm I want to to I, I'm for next week for next edition. I want to make more of it. I want to to maybe uh, to organize some uh, workshop, uh, some uh, panel, as you said, uh, specifically uh, about uh, emotional security. And I want some some LARPers too, because now there is there are LARP that can be played on Discord or on Skype. So there is no reason. And that the the larper uh, shouldn't be invited. So what's the difference between a role playing game played online and a larp played online? It's, I it don't know. I, be... I, I never tried myself, but I think yeah, maybe it's somewhere in between. Um, and yeah, That's... and the larpers are very um, in advance about emotional security than yeah, yeah. we are in the role playing uh, uh, community. So. That's fascinating I, because oh. I, I'm already convinced that I, I, I'm witnessing or I'm engaging with the fact that uh, what's happening is getting us closer together in the community. I'm convinced of that. Uh, this week I started a, uh, a table playing role-playing games with my very first gaming group, like my very first game <laughs> master and a couple of players I haven't played with since pff, maybe 10 years, at least since I moved to, to the UK and even better, uh, sooner. And now we're gonna play online. So we, we're getting closer again and looking cyber conversation. I think that's a lot of role players, streamers, podcasters, publishers who never interacted, now they're getting closer. But now if you're telling me, uh, and it makes sense, I find that there might be even LARPists and tabletop RPG fans getting closer because suddenly there's kind of this overlap of the Venn diagram of practices because online things get slightly less different. Uh, that's even that's even more fascinating. Uh, getting uh, into we we getting close to to the end. I'm gonna leave you go back to your your work. But uh, uh, one final thing, especially for the people listening or watching this, is that I've heard that there were um, maybe ongoing works already to have the round table and maybe the free radio. That would be a lot of content uh, subbed in English uh, on YouTube. Am I right? Uh, yeah, um, I'm looking into that because I consume a lot of my media with subtitles on, uh, especially just to understand like who is speaking. I mean, if you got like two people speaking, it's easier to have like the subtitles like, okay, uh, Alec O'Kane is speaking, speaking, Tali is speaking. And even for people that can't hear at all, or uh, in English, I wanted to have like those uh, panels in English because they were really, really good. Uh, but um, it's a time. Like we got 66 hours of live to subtitles. So it's going to take a long while or a couple of, well, not a couple, a lot of people really motivated. Uh, I think I'm going to do that a little bit on my own time, but I don't know how much I can do. 
uh, it is powerful tool and you can get the transcript from YouTube if you don't want to watch or listen to it. Um, and even podca podcast format. So yeah, subtitles was a big thing I was looking into while uh, we discussed some putting it on YouTube. Yeah, I, because I use it. We, we already had a chat on on private message on Discord. Um, my suggestion, of course, there's always the well. You cannot just enroll people in your own project, but uh, I need to dig in my archives to find some contact details. But the people I would recommend you get in touch with because that's where you would have maybe chances. They would be interested uh, for maybe for next time or this time already is the critical role translate community uh, because they not only they got a community aimed at that with people translating things from english to french uh, and doing subtitles for the all the critical role programs and they do so also in other languages but they i know they have developed tools to do so and practices which they are willing to share because that, that was part of uh, what they said in an interview I, I did at MSM uh, London Comic Con so that's definitely yeah there might be people out there willing interested finding the project interesting and willing to help you that would be that would be another coming together of communities <laughs> another one everybody under the same roof insane enough to, to subtitle all of that uh yeah i'm really interested to do that uh it's i'm trying to contact people like in the coming weeks uh i put it on the discord or the thing but like you said i'm not enrolling people i'm just asking people if you want to do it do it you, you got the option we put a tutorial on youtube to show how to do it uh maybe it's the wrong way because i don't know the tools to do massive subtitles to everyone so we'll see how it goes i'll try uh, to it's I'll pretty try much to learning you. for me I'm trying to find you the contacts because even if they don't have people available to help you, they, I know the know-how, they, 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 they're outspoken about the fact that they, they're willing to help any fandom really uh, to, to yeah. apply them. Uh, speaking of different languages, to, to close, uh, Tali, after this first experience of a Café Rollist in English, do you see yourself <laughs> having an English-speaking edition of CyberConf, uh, maybe? Oh, um... <laughs> Yeah, but that. not with the same team. I'm not sure everyone in the team can uh, do that. But uh, um, myself, I already am la uh, LARPing in, in English um, because, yeah, international LARP are a thing. So, cool. um, so for me, the, yeah, there is no problem for that. But uh, uh, I hope that we, we will have... Um, um, enough of uh, French project to uh, so I don't have to to come <laughs> in and then play in English. I, I think it sounds like that, especially since we did not even discuss that. Uh, but there's another French convention coming pretty soon, organized by other people. So that would be interesting to see how successful they are. As far as I'm concerned, I wish them all the success possible. But see how, yeah, they they are different online convention. The the other one is organized by. Uh, Batro Game and Dead Cross Publishing. Yeah, so. it's a it's a small convention by two uh, publisher, um, both uh, and they I think they are mostly um, playing their games. Um, I've seen the I would program. It's, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's normal, uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's smaller, uh, and but uh, it seems very nice. Yeah, maybe I will just have a look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, like, 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 it, uh, like you said, like, uh, I don't think like Cybercom can do like French and English, seeing all massive it was like in fr in French only. Like, if we like model the, the language, it would be really cool, but it would be really an undertaking that is really uh, hard to do. Maybe later, maybe in years, uh, would be amazing, but I don't think we can handle that so far because like online and English communities are massive, absolutely massive. Uh, I know some and all that stress yet. I don't think <laughs> uh, we're trying to do already what we can with what we have and we'll see how it goes. And I'm really curious to see the other convention and I wish them the best because like it's putting people through RPGs and putting in touch with it 
I'm really fond of that. I'm not doing that for years. And I hope people enjoy it and find a place to do it. So I hope it goes well. And I'm definitely watching the, that round table with the other people uh, that are organizing cons yeah. online. Well, if, if someone, uh, because the, this stream now is uh, re-hosted live by the RPG Academy uh, and uh, they organize Academy Online, so I'm, I'm going to make a public call here in both ways. If there are people from Academy Online who would like to get in touch with CyberConf uh, to have some advice, uh, well, uh, feel free to ask me where to, to reach CyberConf. I'm going to put the details in the description. And if there are people in CyberConf who would be interested in helping Academy Online, uh, please do get in touch with us and uh, the RPG Academy faculty. I'm sure we would value your help a lot. And yeah, I need to <laughs> talk about that with Tom, but... Uh, I don't know if we can pull it off, but there's a couple of things CyberConf did which uh, would be very exciting to do for Academy Online. Uh, anything? Okay, so let's let's just tell me your final plug if you have any, uh, and your goodbyes, and that's gonna be it uh, for for today. Thank you so much for joining Café Rollist. Tali, go ahead, Tali. Yeah, oh, I'm not sure I have anything left to to say, so just. What's happening Goodbye. with Orchid? It was Orchide nice chatting. Is Orchid coming <laughs> back after the? Oh. Uh, we 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 won't doing uh, we won't doing uh, doing it this year. Uh, it will be for next year for next year. Um, we 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 are all uh, always the weekend after uh, Easter, so uh, this time of year uh, in one year. <laughs> so yeah. Hopefully, yeah. And Thank yeah, we are taking the same theme, so it will normally be so superhero like this year. But this, this year it didn't happen, so well, everything yeah. is ready. You just need to yeah, everything is ready. The, uh, the date communication on, the, on your flyers the... and resend it. Yeah. So yeah. Where can people find you if you wish to be found? Uh, on the internet. Um, the website is. Uh, uh, www uh, or, so orchidates or maybe you can put it in the description I will. <laughs> uh, uh, ch um, and uh, on Facebook too uh, yeah we, we are not on Twitter because no one in the committee is very good with Twitter <laughs> so Ala Cocaine, your your final plug away and where can people um, find you? So uh, since we're doing like the thing with the team going forward, uh, we could you could probably find us at uh, La Petite Pause du Yeah, uh, <laughs> You can just like find us there. Uh, on Twitter, you can find Ala Cocaine, I think. Uh, that's not the at, like the at thing, but uh, you can probably find me or just ask Alum to find me. Yeah. It should be it should go well, and if you want to play with me online, uh, you can find me on Facebook at Absolute Tabletop. That is not my group. I've just joined the group, but it's awesome. There's like ton of people in there. They're really creative, really good at what they do, and just ask to join. Amazing! Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining this impromptu, as always, Café Rollist. Uh, yeah, let me know if you managed to see us on YouTube. If there was action in the chat room, I apologize because my OBS interface uh, seems to have crashed, so I couldn't see what you were posting there. But thank you so much, everybody who joined us there. Uh, what else? Don't miss this weekend, this Sunday, April 12th. I will be having a roundtable, a panel about London as a tabletop RPG setting. We will have the return of Dr. Lynn Hardy from Chaosium to tell us about well everything Tulu uh, in relation to London, but also their incoming Rivers of London role-playing adaptation. We will have uh, Andy Peregrine from Modifius who did we worked on the Falls of London uh, Vampire the Masquerade supplement, and we will have Sean Hunt who uh, is busy delivering the London Master Guide, which was successfully crowdfunded, which is a travel guide about London, but with a uh, sort of geeky tabletop flavor to it. Thank you very much. Please check the main show, check our Patreon and so on. And let me know uh, if you have questions or suggestions. 
and uh, see you on uh, which day is it today it's wednesday so see you on friday i i will be probably joined by naomi clark from the no more damsels uh, organization here in london to tell us about what is going on in those times for their uh, non-binary pro women organization which is awesome thank you very much atali and aro kake Allah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.